I walked in 10 minutes late, I moved seat twice when I was in there, the but screen was flashing, and like she didn't bat an eyelid as I did it. She just, yeah. So I'm looking to try and see how people will cope. Are you doing that on purpose? With this, 100%, yeah, yeah. So coming into this every morning, I need to know, right, we've got six new posts to talk about, these are the six. We're in the middle of six of them that we were working on yesterday, right, let's start punching for it. Do it now, let's free these guys to go and do other shit. Progress being made with this morning's meetings? Just flat out, mate, but it's good. Really? Good. We're moving. I need to catch up on lots of things, really, start the month, so I'm hardly in the UK this month, hardly in the office this week, so it's about prioritising and getting things done quickly. Good set of morning meetings there. Yeah, we've done our proposal catch-up um, and we sort of refined the process a bit. What has been refined? Or is it... uh, it's just it's just the speed of things. So once people get used to the process, they then understand it a bit more. Yeah. And all we're trying to do is make things quicker and easier for our strategy team over there to basically get a bit of our time. We know what works um, and the market's constantly changing. And so we need to be giving that piece of advice to the strat team to then pull it all together. And then we go and review it the next day and it means our turnaround will be back to how it was to sort of two, three days. Um, Efficiency. Immediacy of sales is one of the biggest things for me. Immediacy of sales. Yeah. If you meet someone and then you've got a proposal to them the next day, it shows you really care, you understand their product. Um, and Could that gonna... not look like you don't have any other work on? Uh, no, because we will tell them that we have a strat team of, you know, of 12 people, which include design. I don't think many other agencies have that if they're just working with influencers. So it just means we can turn things around really quickly. We've got some really smart people who are really, really creative and they yeah. want to like get the big idea there with lots of different moving parts. Whereas in actual fact, when someone hasn't done influencer marketing before, they want to be able to understand it just on a page. This is what it is. And we need to go back to simplifying that process a bit. So we are in the market for a new account manager, which is really exciting. Um, we've had some really strong candidates. All of them are actually on their final stage. So they'll Ooh, be coming exciting. in to meet Aaron, which is really, really nice. And I'm pretty sure they'll be doing a pitch to him. What are you kind of looking for? Um, we're all looking at different things. I'm looking at the person much more than the content. You know, I walked into one yesterday, into this room. I walked in 10 minutes late, I moved seat twice when I was in there the screen was flashing and like she didn't bat an eyelid as I did it she just yeah so I'm looking to try and see how people will cope are you doing that on purpose with this 100% yeah, yeah yeah because this isn't this is actually not the real thing it gets much more intense than that mm. what actually happens is people stop you 10 seconds in and ask you a question you didn't expect them to ask you and so being able to deal with that and whether you say, okay, I'm gonna to come to that, or whether you go, yeah, no problem, I can answer that now. Like, it's, I'm not saying there's a right or wrong answer, I just yeah. want to see what people do. But the best people under, have that perspective of, okay, I'm not gonna lose my shit, I'm gonna stay calm, and I'm gonna get through this, and do everything I can to get through it. Yeah. As soon as you panic, it's all over. The, the, the one thing we can't have people doing here is panic. I panic it's, all the time. That's why you're behind the camera. <laughs> So you were on a client call doing an upsell. How'd that go? How'd that turn out? Yeah, call went well. They're in the music industry. We worked with them on a awareness campaign for one of their very big artists. Smashed that campaign. They were really, really happy with it and want to move forward with a lot more campaigns. One of their huge artists, uh, new music video that's releasing actually today. So. So we've got that locked in. Yep. It's finally sunny again in New York City. The entire US team is working hard. We're grabbing a quick lunch and then we're heading back to the office. Good news. So basically for their sports book is opening up in PA, Pennsylvania. For their sports book, we have a 500K deal in the works being signed. Um, so yeah, big news. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Solopreneur Hour. I'm not really sure where this is going to go today. We're going to dig into a bunch of stuff, but uh, without further ado, uh, Mr. Aaron Shepard. Hello, sir. How are you? Hello. Very well, thank you. Do you feel like you have to be a bit of Nostradamus, uh, where you're predicting where the industry and where influencer marketing will be going, or mm. is it enough for you to stay in the moment and just react to what 
what the world gives you. You know, we're we're five times the size of our next biggest competitor. So, you know, our our main job is educating the market and the marketing industry really. I'm very rarely going in there and just talking about influencers. I'm trying to convince them on social and, you know, really trying to drive the whole industry forward. I thought we'd have more competitors by now. I thought there'd be three or four others at our size, but there's not. There's a thousand at a tenth of our size, if that makes sense. When we get two or three others, I don't want ten others like us, but when there's two or three others like us and we can collectively move the industry forward, I think it will actually improve the situation. So I'm, mm. I'm weirdly hoping that a couple of these other agencies do things slightly different and sort themselves out to come up in line with us because I spend most of my most of the first bit of the pitch trying to convince the client that we're not that other agency they used three months ago that had eight people that didn't have any data and that promised them the world and didn't deliver anything. You know, they damage us all incredibly. Yeah. So the more people that do what they say they're going to do, the more credible our industry becomes the better it will be. Folks, you've now just listened to another episode of The Solopreneur. Please go check out The Goat Agency as well. Until next time, thank you, Aaron. Appreciate your time, my friend. All right, perfect. Thank you. Appreciate all the love and support you give to these vlogs. We do them every single day and we never hide from the cameras. Thank you so much again. Like, comment, and subscribe below. And we'll see you next time.